So Harry Potter has wizards. You're back? I mean, of course you're back. Welcome back to the best of Harry Potter. Now before we get to the Deathly Hollows, You're just gonna keep doing that every time I say that, aren't you? Anyways, before we get to the next installment, it's time to continue the best of Harry Potter. Since the number seven is the most powerful number in the wizarding world, I decided to count down my top seven moments in Harry Potter. So get yourself ready because these are my top seven moments in Harry Potter. Number 7. Quidditch. The Wizarding World's favorite sport takes the 7th spot on this list. The Quidditch scenes are always enjoyable to see on screen. It was like watching a pod race, but, um, but not as unbearable. If I had to pick which Quidditch scene would be the best, I had to say it's the first one. Something about it just seemed refreshing to see on screen. There you have it. Quidditch. It's not much, but it's still entertaining. The return of Voldemort, the moment that steals the show. You can say what you want about Goblet of Fire, but this scene makes me want to watch the film again and again. There's a lot of things that really makes this part so effective. For one thing, we finally got to see what Voldemort looked like. Till then, all we had was a description in the books, but now we finally got to see him. And Playboy Ray finds no less. And I have to say, I really like his performance. I know he doesn't sound like a snake, but he managed to bring this cunning and wickedness that really brought the character to life. The other reason why I like this moment is because this was the moment that changed everything. We went from a very light atmosphere to a dark one, that only gets more intense as the movies progress. And we have this moment to thank for changing the course of Harry Potter. Number 5. Snape. Just Snape. The screen time he had, Snape always made an impression. There was always something he did that would steal a spotlight. I don't think they could have casted Snape better than giving the role to Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman is good at playing cold characters, and Snape, well, he's the embodiment of being dead inside. Of all those moments, I would have to say that this is my favorite. Tonight we get back to the common room. Both of partners. Agreed. Agreed. Snape may be cold and ruthless sometimes. But he's great enough to get his own spot on this list. Silence. Number 4. The Battle at the Ministry. The Order of the Phoenix has several fun moments, but none as exciting as the Battle at the Ministry. What makes this so great as we finally got to see Wizard Duel. I have to say, I was impressed with the dueling. It felt very much like fencing. But of all of this, there is only one thing that can top this moment. Foolish of you to come here tonight, Tom. The orders are on their way. By which time I shall be gone. And you... shall be dead. Flippin' yes! Dumbledore versus Voldemort. Put it simply, this is magic personified. From shooting beams, to throwing fiery snakes, to creating water prisons, to even using freaking force repulse. This battle has it all. You could complain it's all effects, but then again, 
How else would you do this scene to make it work? Number 3. The Death of Dumbledore There was a reason why I didn't go into detail about this scene. Like the return of Voldemort, the death of Dumbledore is one of the moments I was anticipating, and I thought it turned out rather well. Some moments in the scene could be a little cliché. What could you expect with a character like Dumbledore? I should point out that the ending of Half-Blood Prince is different from the film's ending because there's a funeral held for Dumbledore, and thinking about it, I'm glad they left it out. Having it in there would have just been overkill, and would have taken so much away from the scene. It only seems fitting to have the death of a great character get the number three spot on this list. Number two, the music. I know, I'm cheating on this one, but it wouldn't feel right not to mention it somewhere. Say what you want about the movie, you can't deny that all the Harry Potter films have terrific music. What's really interesting is that even with all the different composers, the music kept the same in its own way as well as each individual soundtrack able to stand on its own. If I had the picks from my favorite tracks, it'd go something like this. Double Trouble from Prisoner of Azkaban, as well as the instrumental version. opening to Goblet of Fire, the Fly of the Order from Order of the Phoenix, Journey to the Cave. And Dumbledore's Farewell from Half-Blood Prince. And if you think I'm missing one, don't worry, I've saved the best for last. Which is none other than Hedwig's theme, created by the one and only, John Williams. Anyways, it doesn't matter what film you're watching, you know you're going to get something wonderful when it comes to music. And the number one spot goes to... The Ending to Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah. This is number one. Probably wondering why. Well, I was going to explain anyway, so here it goes. First off, I'm not talking about the climax itself. I'm just talking about this scene. This was the first great defining moment in Harry Potter. It was a sort of moment that brought all the magic of Harry Potter to full circle. But none can capture the innocence of the first one. And if the filmmakers are really smart, they should look back at this ending if you really want a good epilogue. Other than that, it's number one on this list. top seven moments, proving that there are several moments to remember when watching the films of Harry Potter. Don't go anywhere, because if you do, I will take ten points away from Gryffindor. And when I come back, I will end this special by rating all six